You lost your phone, life's a rolling stone on a broken roller coaster. Okay. Scream shit, move on, throw your hands up, move on. It's all good, today is your day. Woo! Time is filled with swift transition, put yourself in good position if you want. Things can go your way. Woo! Ain't no time to smell the roses, gotta get to where to go. This the road's already been paid. Here I go, ready now. I'm coming for you, can't nothing stop me. I got some things. I gotta do So I am in Melbourne. I've just been for a cheeky little ride here on a Monday morning before I fly back. It's the day after the sun tour. And I thought before I fly back, I'll pay a cheeky little visit to my good friends at Inform and find out about their incredible start to the 2019 season. I was just after the managing director of Inform, Cameron Nichols. Uh, yeah. Cameron Nichols here to the scene for 11 o'clock. Um, just general organisation and having the right people in the right roles um, and making sure they're able to perform the exact role. Um, so DS is one of the most important ones. So having someone like Pat in that role is unreal because it means that um, I don't have to be so hands-on. The young kids respect him so much as well. He's fresh out of it um, and he's just a great man for the for the job, yeah. so that's an important one. We've also now got um, Swannies with Linda on board, who's pretty much able to do the whole year, and she's experienced as well. Um, we've got a few really good mechanics now as well. Um, so all the roles are filled, and then when it comes to riders, the biggest thing we learnt was we needed a deeper roster. So we had ten riders last year. We lost a couple, uh, a few got injured, uh, and. Uh, a couple probably lost motivation as well, which left us well short of riders. So we've now got a much bigger roster, 16 riders, because we feel you need it. To NRS racing, there's seven riders in every, every race. Um, and then having the right budget, the right structure, like we've actually um, created a proper company for the team now, and it's a separate entity to inform, and all our sponsorship agreements with our sponsors are signed off, and payment dates are set. So everything's sort of tightened up and just much more organised and prepared for the upcoming season. It was very hard for me, it was very hard for me because I was in love with Patrick the Cyclist at first and when, when we came up with the idea of him stopping racing mid last year but becoming DS, I knew that he'd be a good DS but he was still on top of his game really as a bike rider. Um, however, yeah, we lost our general manager last year, which we thought at the time was a bit stressful, but in a way, um, yeah, Pat, Pat's sort of transition into that has almost been, yeah, one of the best things that's happened for the team, really. Have you um, enjoyed the transition, or have you found a transition, I should say? Yeah, good, it's busy and there's a lot to learn. Um, but it's been a good time. It's nice to stay involved and keep developing and sort of working out what I'll do after racing, but still be involved with all the guys and do you miss racing? Um, I mean, yeah, a bit. I miss it when I'm going. Like, if I can be at the top of my game and racing, then it's always good fun. Yeah. But I'm pretty happy like with what I'm doing at the moment. So it's all good. Say that. If he's not 100 percent on his game, he's not whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we massively did. Like the silly season is September, October, November. When in that small period of time, you've got to lock in all your sponsors, all your riders. It's very, very stressful. <laughs> and then why is it stressful? Oh, because. This, the first part we need to happen is the sponsorship income and you need to know what that is because if you don't know what that is, you don't know what you're telling your riders your program is. So that needs to be set first and in a perfect world you do that, lock that away. Sorry, I'm not meant to touch the table. <laughs> lock, you lock that away first, early, and then you can say to your riders, this is exactly what we're doing. So yeah, we were talking non-stop about both those things um, and then luckily the sponsorship fell into place, which was great, we had a healthy budget. But then rider-wise, the key is 
a good group of leaders, and then we wanted um, really talented young riders um, who had potential to turn into world tour riders. Um, so a balance of those two. Um, oh, I think it's ended up being, I don't know if we normally publicly say this, oh, okay. but it's ended up being about 240 cash. Yeah, okay. And then cars and equipment and stuff that we receive is on top of that. Yeah. Well, it's about, from where I sit, I'm either helping kids who have got a chance to make it in the sport, mm -hmm. but also making sure they're focusing on something as a fallback, some sort of study. But then the older guys, it's about helping them transition out, really, um, and getting a year or two out of them um, when they're at top of the game, like Nath, Raf, and Pat, but also setting up a really good exit plan, career path for them to get out of cycling. So um, I'll let Pat answer that too, but you've got to get the right people around as leaders, um, such as Patrick and the other older guys in the team. We are so lucky to have had Pat Lane, Raf Freinstein, Stu Smith and now Nathan Elliott. All four of those guys are very good bike riders and really, really good blokes. Um, so that sets the culture. But we also have meetings at the start of the year and just lay out some basic team rules and what our expectation is. Like the Sydney Swans, the no dickhead policy and just respecting everyone and not getting ahead of yourselves. You're not world tour riders, you're far from it. And just respect everyone around you and say good day to everyone around you and appreciate all the people that are supporting you. Yeah, looking smart as well is always a key. Yeah, well, that is, yeah, that, that's all that sponsorship and just, yeah, making people want to be part of it kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of that comes, like Cam said, having us older guys there. We can put a lot of effort into sort of setting us up with getting out of cycling and into whatever we do next fair life and not many team um, owners or whatever would do put that effort in. And then they're having guys like Cam, Matt and Brian and we always have a good time when we go away and really good culture there. And I think we're all the kids we put on are nice kids and sort of appreciate what we're doing. So it flows through the team. So how many teams, good how many teams have Sorry, that's a very important ones he mentioned. Matt and Brian, and I'm not just saying this, like I always make sure them as well, as well as yourself, yeah. come to the events because um, former team members and also really good guys just to have the, you know, supporting the boys and have to be around. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it was just, it's been a pretty much a fairy tale start. Nationals was just incredible. On the Friday, Jared Drisner's winning the national criterium, and the way he did it was just unbelievable. Um, what, so what did he do to make it unbelievable? Oh, well, they lapped the field, him and Cal O'Brien, and then did this cat and mouse final lap, just the two of them. And Cal being such a high profile track rider, was sort of the favourite and Jared sort of outfoxed him kind of in a way, not to put down Kel, because Kel's an absolute legend and an awesome kid. The way he was so, so uh, congratulated to us all after that was just, yeah, speaks high volumes about him. But um, yeah, that was an incredible start. And then the, the Eddie boys won two in the road race in the under-19s, was just bloody unbelievable. <laughs> Um, was that expected? Did you like for those guys going to the Oh win? yeah, I mean, I did think he was probably favourite, um, mm. either one of them. So that was just, but for two, two brothers to get one two was amazing. Yeah. Um, and our other gold medal, what's our other gold medal? The uh, Pat at his TT, and then two silvers, and then Nate at Cadell's and Carter in the break was just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was part of um, the. Cycling Australia set up a bit of a reward sort of system for the team. So first place gets some riders at Tour Down Under and second at Cadell's. Um, so then we were meant to get five at Cadell's. Because um, we focused so much on young riders, we worked with Cycling Australia and worked out that we were probably better off having two there, being a World Tour race. Yep. And um, we took five to Sun Tour as well, which was really good for our guys because it meant that we got seven sort of spots all up. Um, to give the guys opportunities at some great races over the summer. Yeah, and just on Cadell's, to have two M4 riders in a World Tour race in a break pretty much the whole day, particularly Carter, I mean, for someone who's 18 to be in a break, what, what does that mean for him as a rider in his future? Can I just say, that, that, that's a very good question, I'll let Pat answer yeah. it. Can I just say something quickly about that though, which Pat told me, Pat and um, Carter was on the microphone, was he on the microphone? On the, yeah. yeah, and Pat, 
told him to bridge over to that break. Right. I, I thought Carter just decided to do it on his own accord. Right. It was a very uh, good call from Pat to do that. So he said, off you go, Carter. So this poor kid, not poor kid, it was great for him. First world tour race, he yeah. starts off around all these superstars and his DS has told him, go bridge to the break, mate. <laughs> and he actually did it. And it was just so cool for him to get all that commentary time. And Yeah. So why did you make that call when you already had one rider in the break? Um, uh, it was, we identified, we had four guys that wanted to ride the final around yeah. there. Um, Carter at 18 will probably be the, or will be the youngest guy to race a world tour race this year. Yep. Um, it's pretty rare for an 18 year old to ride a world tour event. Um, so we had Nate up there with one other and with Nate in there with a two man group, you're sort of going to sit up there and die away. So me and Brad in the car spoke and I decided to send Carter across hoping he'd drag a few more and we'd maybe have two in six or something. And then the break actually has a small chance. Um, and no one followed, so then Carter's job was to just look after Nathan there and get him as close in and to the finish as he could and picking up as many points as they could. Yeah, um, Yeah, we've of course, I mean we finished second last year and we've got a more experienced and a stronger team this year, so we're of course trying to win the NRS. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, continue the momentum and develop the kids and make sure it's a really positive environment. How do you think, Patrick? Um, I'm like a racing performance run up. It's trying to structure their racing so they got clear blocks there. They know when they need to be going well and put in the work. They'll have a couple of races and they might have a bit of down period where they can rest <coughs> a bit. Um, so we try and make sure that everyone knows what races they've got coming up a long time in advance. They can plan their training and racing when they're resting. And then we also try and fill in the winter with doing a block in Belgium for a month where they get heaps of racing in, so that definitely helps, I think. Something to work towards and look forward to for them. Yeah, good. So last question, are we ever gonna see you down at Glenbar racing the crits again? <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid way to end it on my bike, on my bike riding. <laughs> Funny that's how it all started, that's how the team started. Well, I got dropped at Hellride just before Frank's on <laughs> Saturday, so I think I'm a fair way off Glenbar, but never know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Um, well, thanks for sharing today, though. No worries. Um, I love what you're doing. Thanks a lot for your support, Mark Chaser. Mr. Sun is shining on me.